I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. An estimated 650 million people around the world watched live as Neil Armstrong became the first person to set foot on the moon. It was the largest television audience in history at that time, nearly one out of every five people on Earth, even though for many of them, it was the middle of the night. The event that captured their imagination came courtesy of some very smart people in Texas. Houston had been chosen as the home of mission control for NASA, American Space Agency, less than a decade earlier. President John F. Kennedy braved the heat at the city's Rice Stadium to announce the ultimate effort for many of the nation's scientists and engineers. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why 35 years ago fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. At the time, the U.S. was in a space race with the Soviet Union and had fallen behind. It was up to the men and women of the Manned Spacecraft Center at Clear Lake on Houston's southeast side to bring the country a huge moral victory. Astronauts were the biggest celebrities in Texas in the 1960s, drawing crowds and enjoying free dinners when they were not undergoing rigorous training. Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins had been part of the space program for years, and all three had been into space as part of the Gemini program. Apollo 11, the first mission planned for a landing on the moon, was the biggest thing NASA had ever attempted. On July 16, 1969, the three men climbed into the Columbia capsule, perched the equivalent of 36 stories atop a Saturn V rocket at Florida's Cape Kennedy. The launch was perfect. We have a go for main engine start. We have main engine start. Four, three, two, one, zero. While Collins kept the Columbia capsule in an orbit around the moon, his two crewmates squeezed into Eagle, the lunar landing craft, which separated just as the designers had planned. Eagle descended to the moon's sea of tranquility on the afternoon of July 20th, and the first word spoken from the lunar surface was the name of NASA's Texas hometown. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Tranquility. We copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. After a four-hour rest and preparation period, Armstrong and then Aldrin descended from Eagle to make history as the lead players in a scientific milestone that took thousands of people to achieve. I'm going to step off the limb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Armstrong and Aldrin spent 21 hours, 36 minutes on the surface of the moon. The firing of the lunar lander and its rendezvous with Collins and Columbia went flawlessly. The trio splashed down in the Pacific Ocean and were recovered by the U.S. aircraft carrier Hornet after an overall mission of just over eight days. Because no one on Earth knew what sort of dangerous organisms might lurk on the moon, the three astronauts were forced to quarantine for 21 days. Though they got to talk to their families, and U.S. President Richard Nixon. Ticker tape parades in Houston and New York City were only the beginning of the accolades. In 1969, a person born before the first ever powered airplane flight had barely reached retirement age. And now, mankind was landing on the moon.
It left the world breathless and giddy, united in admiration for a great achievement, if only for a brief window in time. For some, though, the rockets of Apollo 11 lit a spark of inspiration, setting them on a path to push their own boundaries of achievement.